I'm so happy right now. <laughs> but I won't, don't want to skip. I don't want to skip to the finale. But I am happy. And also, Bartice is still a... If there is one thing that this season of The Perfect Match has taught us, it is that Bartice should not be allowed on television. And I mean never again. Can we please stop giving this man opportunities to be on screen? Let's get into the recap of episode 11 and 12 of The Perfect Match. So episode 11 starts off with basically the aftermath of Shane saying, I'm walking out, I'm leaving, all this jazz. And he pretty much ends up in Dom and George's room. Don't know why. I guess he has stuff in that room. Why? I don't know. But he ends up there and he's pretty much just like, I give up on this woman. Like, I give up, I want to go home, blah, blah, blah. And then Chloe can kind of hear, like, the rumblings of what's going on. And then she comes over to their room and she's just like, like, what is going on? Like, why are you acting like this? Like, I don't understand. And then he's just like, well, how could you just laugh? How could you just laugh if they're just creating a connection with me and then leaving me for Mitchell? And she's just like, oh, my God. She's like, I did not do that on purpose. And either you move on or you don't. But I can't be doing this. And then she just, like, walks on. She's like, you need to grow up. This is ridiculous. And basically, Dom and Georgia are, are, are putting out fires here. So Dom stays with Shane and is like, dude you need to basically he's like dude you need to get it together okay you need to get it together because this is ridiculous like if this were the other way around like she's like yeah but she's going from match to match and he's like you did the same thing dude and i'm like thank you for dom thank you for dom thank you thank you thank you for putting some sense into this man named shane and then chloe is talking to georgia and she's just like listen like i just want to be able to like talk to him about this because if not if he continues to act like this it is a red flag and honestly it is a red flag it's a big red flag and I don't know where they where they are today but it is a very big red flag and if I were Chloe I would be very much walking away because that's kind of scary but whatever and then we move on to the next morning and um Shane and Chloe break up they're like I'm just kidding <laughs> Obviously, you guys would know because you watch the show. But um, no, they don't break up. They end up actually talking it out, which honestly, it's what I thought was going to happen. You know, there's always like a huge drama at nighttime. Cause, you know, drinks are involved. It's late. People have been sleeping. Like, there's just so many factors. And it usually just takes like, just go to bed, rest, talk it in the morning. So that's exactly what they do. And Shane, you know, he tells, you know, that where he's being interviewed, he's like, you know, it was my fault. It's completely my fault. I should not have handled handled things the way that I did. I was self-sabotaging and it was wrong, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, thank you, Shane. At least you know, because you did bad. It was not it was not a good look for you. And he apologizes to Chloe and just says that he was just afraid because, you know, after what had happened to him on after the alt on on Love is Blind and being left at the altar, and then she comes in and, and then she chooses somebody over him. He was just like afraid of what could possibly happen and he realizes that you know it is his fault and that he should not have reacted the way that he did it was wrong and he should not have treated chloe like that and i said thank you thank you very much okay and then they're all they get back together everything's magical Woohoo! i love you well not i love you but everything's good so that was squashed thank god they talked that out then they decide nick lachey comes in and he's just like so, you guys, I wonder what you, you guys do. I have no idea why I'm here, right? Huh? And everybody's like, oh, there's probably a twist coming. And basically what they do, and I found this portion of the whole, most of the evening, and this is going to be a really short recap, because it was kind of like, let's just bring everyone back into the house and see if we can, like, break people up. Basically, it was, like, just their way of being, like, let's see how strong these connections are. So you have literally everyone who started from day one is brought back into the house, starting from, like, Savannah, Chase, Zay, and Sophie, Colony, et cetera, et cetera. Um, And, you know, you just have typical just banter, talk, people trying to create a little bit of drama, Savannah trying to stir the pot. You could tell Fran still hates her and she still hates Francesca. It's actually hilarious to see these two girls just, like, have this beef. It's so funny, like, because Savannah is so unbothered but also bothered by her because she's just like, oh, she's just so threatened by me. It's just two, it's just two women on their high horse, and it's hilarious. But the first thing Francesca tells Damien is, if you talk to Savannah, I'll kill you. I died. It was hilarious. But 
all in all, at the end or throughout the episode, you know, Will talks to Francesca and he basically, you know, tries to see if there's something there. And she's just like, mm, kind of, mm. then he tries and tries and fails yet again with Abby. Abby's like, no, like, me and Bartice are good. Like, we decided, like, it's going to be us. Like, we're good. Um, and then Izzy and Bartice start talking. And this is where some things get interesting because there was a point where Izzy and Bartice were a thing and then a new person came and he kind of left. Was it? Or did he leave it for Inez? I forgot who, what it was. But there was a whole ordeal where in the end Bartice did not pick up Izzy and Izzy had to go home. And now she's back in the house and it just basically caused... A little bit of a mm, oh, maybe I should go back with Izzy over Abby when before he was very like sure of Abby and Abby kept saying no to everybody else because she's like oh no Bartiz is gonna pick me like we we decided like we're gonna still pick each other at, at the end of this and that's one girl I, you will you learned your lesson after talking to Bartiz and I hope Izzy does at some point um but basically, Bartiz is just like, I'm torn between Abby and Izzy. You know, we get along. She's 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 being mature about the fact that I didn't pick her. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Then, this is when things, and this is like, basically the, the real meat and potatoes. Because, yeah, oh, I actually didn't even write a lot for episode 11. Because, honestly, it was just a whole bunch of, like, people trying to talk to people. And it didn't really matter at the end of it. Because it was like, these couples are so strong. Like, I have... No one's going to get in between Georgia and Dom at this person. No one's going to go in between Chloe and Shane. Like, these are really, you know, um, Carousel and Joe. These couples, like, what is the point? But whatever. So, the meat of the episode, basically, Damien decides that he wants uh, something outside of this. Because, basically, you know, Nick Lachey is like, you know, you have to find a match by the end of this night. If you don't, if you, if you, you know, Talk to your person and you decide you both aren't a perfect match, you need to leave. If you're not matched with someone, you need to leave. You don't believe that person is here. So Damien's like, I want something outside of this with Francesca. And he decides to do this like romantic thing for her. And he like sent, brings her to the room and puts out like all these rose petals on the floor. And it's like, oh, magical and beautiful and romantic, right? And he asks her to be his girlfriend after all these like, he made me want to be a better person. All those like typical things people say. And I actually didn't know what was going to happen after this because the moment he said this, like there was like kind of like no emotion from Francesca. She wasn't like, oh my God, really? Like it was just like, like she kind of was just like serious. And I'm like, okay, she could either in one minute start crying and be like, oh my God, yes. Or she could be like, sorry, not feeling it. I didn't know where this was going, but in the end, she basically starts crying and she tells him that she doesn't see a future with him outside of the show. I was like, this was the first time this whole show that Francesca was honest, like the first time that she was finally honest and real. She starts crying and she's just like, listen, we don't have in-depth conversations. I don't feel like you actually know me. Like, what is it that you like about me other than the fact that I'm attractive? Like, we've never sat down and have had in-depth conversations. And I don't really know much about you and you don't really know about me. And I just don't see this working outside of this. And I said, wow. Wow. So what was, like, what was the point? Like, what, like, what was the point? I don't know. But... That was the first time she was ever actually real in that house. And you know what? For that, I, I appreciate that. And I will give her some points for being like, at least she knew, like, we're not a match. Let's just go home. So, yeah, at the end of that, they both decide, okay, and they leave. I said, what a turn of events. What a turn of events it has been. Okay, and then this is when we also move on to the other big part of episode 11. And it is with the one man I can't stand, Mr. Bartiste. So Abby and Bartiste have a conversation and he basically says, she's like, oh, so like what's going on? Like are we still on the same page? And he's just like, well, I'm thinking maybe I'll pick you at the end of the night. And she's like, excuse me? And she's like, well, you know, Izzy came back and she's like, wait, like, Literally 30 minutes ago, you said that you were all in with me. And now Izzy's here. And you start talking to Izzy for like five minutes. And all of a sudden, you're like, yeah, no, I changed my mind. 
what the hell. And he basically is an ass beep. Um, and basically just shows her his true colors, which basically he ends up using like these words, like just ends up using her own words against her. And there's this amazing quote that Abby says in the next episode that I can't wait to say. But basically he's just like, she's like, you're going to look like a dick if you do that. And he's like, well, I don't care what I look like. I care about what I feel. I don't care what I look like. You obviously care about how you look. You know, you're talking about how you look about your mom's going to see you on TV. And oh my God, your mom, your sister's going to think of this of you. Like, I don't care about how people look. And she's just like, wow, like, you're using like my own words against me like that's when it starts to click like who Bartiste is in that moment and she's like you know what you can stay with Izzy like absolutely not and then that I will lead right into episode 12 recap guys because obviously episode 11 not much happened that was important episode 12 Abby says this one thing she says I wrote it down because I thought it was amazing she said wow the words I told you in confidence you're going to weaponize against me. I said, he sure is because he's freaking Bartiz. Netflix, please, for the love of God, stop putting this man on TV. Stop putting him in his, in your shows. Stop, for the love of God, having women not realize who they are getting in front of. I can't. And I'm so ha happy that Abby noticed it and she was like, basically tells the rest of the house she's leaving and she kind of on the way out tells some people what he said, what he did. And she's basically saying like, you know, this guy was gaslighting me and he's a prick. And I said, that is correct. And uh, she leaves the house. She's gone. Bye, Abby. Uh, we had Nick and LC decided to match again. Izzy and Bartise end up matching and all the regular couples who we know end up matching and everyone else who kind of had left the house ends up leaving because they're not going to match with anyone at this point like it's impossible so basically this whole episode mostly consisted of everyone on their private everyone goes on a last private date with the person who they have matched with we start off with nick and nick and lc and they're basically talking about long distance relationships and this is a conversation that goes along for most of the couples because most of these couples are going to be in long distance relationships most of them are from different countries so nick and lc are basically talking about that and how they're like specifically from nick's side he's just like you know i, I really like you but i haven't really gotten to know you yet. and I'm like it's granted these are really normal like it's a normal thing to not be not say like you're my perfect match like you literally met this person like four days ago. Like there's maybe four. There's no way you can guarantee that this is this person is your perfect match. Especially because there's going to be long distance involved. Like it's going to be a big change. So yeah, Nick straight up just says, I'm not going to say you're my perfect match. And I was like, oh, well, okay, we're, we're getting straight to it. But it was interesting because it did feel like LC didn't really like that. But later on, it seems like she did. So it is what, and she was fine with it. But in the moment, I was like, eesh, ouch, that sucks. Uh, then you have Bartiz and Izzy again, also talking about the long-distance relationship. He's from Dallas. She lives in Manchester. Like, that's far. That's, a, that's far. It's about a 12-hour flight. It is far. So they're also kind of like, uh, not really sure if that's going to work. So we're not going to say we're a perfect match. Then you have Shane and Chloe, and they basically, re they, you know, they talk about the issues but they also talk about the great things and and chloe i think chloe handled this season so freaking beautifully i love that girl and i hope if shane and chloe are still together i hope they're happy and have worked out their issues but they're they at the end after you know she basically tells you know shane like you need to work on your communication you need to work on the way you react to things because if not if you don't change your ways like this relationship is not going to work it's not going to work outside of this i honestly thought for a second she was going to be like because of that we can't be a perfect match but also at the same time i knew she was like falling in love with him so in the end they were like no i absolutely know you're my perfect match oh my god oh, whatever lovey dovey and then we move on to Georgia and Tom, who I personally believe are a perfect match. It's such a cute start. They're on their boat and they're just kind of like joking back and forth together, like making the same kind of jokes. They have a very similar energy. You know, she goes on to tell him about how uh, she's, you know, she knew that he was going to be someone she was going to be really interested in, the way he carries himself, the way he's so thoughtful and caring. And I, I actually do see them being a very perfect match. I... 
I actually really like them and I hope that they are still together. Um, but of course they, they, they basically tell themselves like, yeah, I, I know you're my perfect match. Then the bombs start dropping and this one shocked me guys. I'm not going to lie because that's not the whole point of the show, but it shocked me. Joey and Carousel go on their date and they're on this like high top thing, like looking over the jungle almost. By the way, this, this, uh, this show was filmed in Panama, Panama beautiful location I will say beautiful um but Joey and Carousel are there talking and she's just like you know I just want to make sure we're moving forward and he's just like you know there's no one else I want to be with like you're my perfect match like that is absolutely true and they're just you know gushing about each other and just saying how like there's no one they would rather be with and then and this is it got kind of quiet for a second and I was like oh my god no is he is is he is he though? And he gets down on one knee and proposes to Carousel. I was like, and also that was Carousel. Carousel was literally like, no, you're not. Or she was shocked. And, you know, <laughs> at the end, I was happy for them because I know that that's what Carousel wanted more than anything was for this guy to propose and this guy to like commit to her for real. And nothing says commitment more than being like, hey, do you want to marry me? You know? But she, yeah, she is shocked. He actually proposes, has the ring and everything. And she's like, did you ask my dad? And he's like, I asked before this. It was really cute and it was a really nice moment. But I will say that at this point, I was like, okay, so what? what is the point of announcing the perfect match? Like, they're already getting married. Like, like how do you top that? Like, what is the point of the rest of the show? Like, literally, that's what I was thinking the whole time. It's like, okay, where do we go from here? Um, but yeah, um, so basically the way that show ended or how it comes to an end, and I, I found this really interesting, but what they do is they bring everyone back into the house and then they have the couples come in and sit and basically Nick Lachey will ask each couple like how their experience has been like, and then throughout them talking about their experience and how, what they think about the person they ended up with, et cetera, et cetera, and the people they talked with. You have the other people that had left the house are also there and they can kind of chime in and say their side of the story. So Nick Lachey could be like, oh, Inez, like you dated Bartice. Like, what do you think about this match or et cetera, et cetera. So people can kind of chime in. So it felt very like reunion vibes. It gave me really reunion vibes, but it was really just like the ending of the show, which I guess I kind of liked because it was a you were able to like, everyone was able to kind of air out their tea like that same on the same episode instead of it being like let's come back for a reunion show and everyone could just be like you you were in a perfect match and you did this to me like everyone was able to just say what they wanted to say to the other people right there and it didn't matter so I kind of liked that but yeah they basically go around and spill the tea about their relationships and then Nick would ask at the end so do you think this is your perfect match and obviously like Bartice and Izzy were like no Elsie and Nick were like no Everybody else said yes, which understandably so, because these other the other four people had literally just gotten together like a day ago. So it makes sense. Lots of tea was spilled. Chase was literally like just saying 100% absolutely not a couple. He did not believe that Georgia and Dom were a legit, genuine couple. He's like, this is a lie. This isn't true. This is a, like he was so against this and I have... He must have just been really hurt that Georgia did not pick him. But they even went into that. And Chase was just like, uh, I hated Chase on this season as well. But Chase during this season was also weird because he was saying like, oh, like you can't hate on people from like going from connection to connection. And then literally five minutes later was like, oh, I don't think this is a real relationship because Dom, five minutes ago, you were into Fran and then all of a sudden you were into Georgia. And I'm like, dude, you are you are uh, contradicting yourself here because you're saying that that is bad when you were just saying, when you were defending Bartice being like, oh, it's fine. So, mm, no, don't give me shit, whatever. Um, I thought Francesca was going to be more like icky or give more shit to Georgia and Dom, but she actually didn't. She was just like, you know what? Like, you know, if that's, if they believe that they are, then I respect that. I was shocked. That was like, I was shocked she actually wasn't like well he said he loved me and then he was like she didn't bring any of that up she was very like no like that's not the case so I was like okay all right maybe she got over it okay 
So basically after all that was said, Carousel and Joey were last to go and um, chase to that couple. It was like absolutely 1000% they are the perfect match for each other. All this crap. And Joey confesses and tells everyone there that they are indeed engaged. And everyone's like, what? Everyone freaks out, starts hugging them. They're really happy for them. It's really cute. Um, oh, yeah. And then also, I forgot to mention, Chloe and Shane and Mitchell had a little gripe going on. Mitchell didn't have a voice. He clearly was partying too hard. He lost his voice, so he was like, oh, I can't really talk. It was hilarious. Um... But he was just like, I don't, I know Chloe and I know Shane and I don't think that's, that that's a genuine connection. And they were like, what? And then Shane's like, you've talked to me for like five minutes. And he's like, no, I was talking about Chloe. And Chloe's like, no, you, and then Shane, uh, Mitchell kept saying like, oh, we and him are so alike. And <laughs> she was like, whoa, 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 buddy, you guys are not that much alike because one, you weren't ready to commit to me and prioritize me as a girlfriend. And he is, that's number one. I said, she, thank you. Thank you. That's all you have to say. Thank you. You did not prioritize her. You did not want her to be your girlfriend. Shut the hell, sit down and shut the hell up. You just bitter. You bitter. Because she didn't want to go on this ride with you of like not caring about not being in a relationship. So shut up. So then everybody goes, every single person individually goes into the boardroom and goes and um, votes on who they think is a perfect match. And guys, guys. I will say I was a little surprised, but then I was very happy because basically Nick Lachey goes on to say like, okay, so um, this was a very tight, tight race, basically. Um, the winners won by one vote and everybody was like, oh my God, like this was that close? Like what? Oh my God. Because I think at this point, everyone just thought Carousel and Joey were just going to be the straight winners. And guys, it was not Dom and Georgia one by one vote and I was so happy because I really like them and I hope they're so together I hope they're making it work even though she is from Australia and he is from Canada it's a long way a very long way but I hope I hope they're so together because they seem really cute and really happy and I was so happy but everybody when they said Dom and Georgia you knew how selfless they were because not for one second did they think they were going to win. Dom's face was so sh shocked. He was like, what? Like, like literally eyes popped out of his eye socket. He was so shocked. And Georgia too, they were like, what? And they even said, they're like, guys, like we, we honestly thought it was going to be Carousel and Joey. And I mean, I think Carousel and Joey probably thought it was going to be them too. But in the end, they were just like, it's fine. Like, we're getting married. <laughs> and everybody else was like, that's true. Like, who cares if you're the perfect match? Like, you're engaged. Like, you got what you wanted. You're getting fucking married. But yeah, they won. And it's really cool because uh, Nick Lachey says, um, you guys will be given a full one week vacation, all paid anywhere you want to go in the world. Imagine someone's like, hey, we'll pay for your entire vacation anywhere for one week, anywhere you want to go shoot and um i think they were like talking to each other while winning and then they're like where do you want to go and she's like the maldives i said that's exactly where you want to go because it's the most expensive private place to travel but they were like oh we knew we were a perfect match but we didn't know we were the perfect match and they were really cute and i was very very happy with this win they deserved it in my in my opinion i think they did it because they really went through a lot of ups and downs i think carousel and joey only had like a really bad stint was just mostly like in the first two episodes and then they were just kind of coasting the whole time and yeah they might have had their like just dis not disagreements but you know worries but it was more kind of like between them it wasn't things that like people would really know and I think Dom and Georgia really kind of showed everyone from the outside could see how much they really like fought to be together because you know they really that was not a couple I ever saw I thought it was just gonna be Francesca and Dom and then when that got dropped then it became Georgia and I was like oh is this gonna be serious and they always came back to each other they never they never even for a second doubted their connection not for a second where they like well maybe I can go back to Francesca or maybe I can go back to Chase or maybe I can try something with someone new that's not once they always just said, I really like Dom. I really like Georgia. I have someone in the house. And they just kept to each other every time. And I think 
that is what made people really believe in their perfect match connection on top of the fact that they were there almost the longest as well um so yeah i think it was it was the right win and i'm so happy but guys that was the end of season one the perfect match on netflix overall what i thought about the show i think the show was was fun i enjoyed it but i think there were i don't think the season needed to be that long i think it would have been fine if it was just 10 episodes i don't think we needed 12 because at some point bringing in these people into the house so late in the game really isn't gonna help anyone because none of these people are gonna be around each other enough to actually be like oh yeah i really want to it could just be like a camera thing it could just be like i want to stay on the show it doesn't seem genuine the only people that will seem genuine are the people that are there from the first week and sec first to third week possibly or third week in in terms of like episodes because i actually don't know how long they're in there before i mean it said it but i don't remember um uh, I think that's the only thing I didn't like is just like I felt like a lot of people's opportunities were really wasted because the couples were too strong at this and on the house so it was like what was the point of bringing these people in they're not going to make a connection you know but overall I would watch a season two of the perfect match let me know what you guys thought of this brand new Netflix reality tv show in a comment below would you guys watch perfect match season two or was the season one enough for you and you don't need any more let me know in a comment below. And if you liked this video, please give it a huge thumbs up. Please also, if you're new here, click that subscribe button because I'm going to be doing Love is Blind in March. I'm super excited for Love is Blind. I also want to say hello to all of my new subscriber friends. Thank you for joining my Watchaholic family. I really, really appreciate it. It's been so cool to see so many new faces on here and seeing so many people to chat with in the comments it truly brings me so much joy but guys i will see you in the next video bye